a V3 booster just exploded during its first test, prompting SpaceX to urgently release an update. What happened? And is this all bad news? Let's discuss it all in today's episode of NR Studio. Right now, all eyes at Starbase are focused squarely on the B-18 incident at the Massey Test Facility. Yes, the same Massey Test site again. In just over a year, the site has experienced two shocking and highly disruptive incidents. Prior to this incident, the B-18's deployment, which brought many long-awaited upgrades, had generated much excitement. Many considered it a significant step toward the V-3's anticipated maiden flight next year. It seemed like real progress was finally being made. However, as is often the case in rocketry, progress is rarely smooth or predictable. At precisely 4, 4 minutes and 58 seconds, everything changed. A seemingly minor and routine inspection resulted in the B-18 suddenly exploding in the fuel tank area, specifically the area housing the liquid oxygen tank. The explosion radius was vast and clearly visible in the footage. Fortunately, there was no subsequent fire, which provided some comfort amidst the chaotic situation. Hours later, images showing the condition of the B-18 circulated rapidly, with updates being shared throughout the morning. From the side facing the test tank, the exterior of the vehicle appeared severely damaged, resembling a crushed soda can. Cracks in the area also appeared to indicate damage. This was a clear early indication that whatever had happened inside the vehicle was quite severe. However, the other side of the booster showed a far more alarming story. The casing had been ripped open, creating a significant jagged hole. This is where the potential internally damage began. The hole appeared as if a very large anomaly had ripped through it. After photos were taken in daylight, it became clear that the internal fuel tank had also been damaged. However, despite the intensity of the explosion and its structural distortion, the rocket booster had surprisingly remained upright. This was a positive indication, suggesting that some components of the overall structure had handled the incident better than anticipated. Naturally, the pressing question on everyone's minds was, what exactly happened? After an event of this magnitude, the community was immediately looking for information from SpaceX. Fortunately, the company acted quickly and shared initial information. Their initial communication confirmed that there were no injuries and noted that personnel consistently maintained a safe distance during the test. They highlighted that the location continued to be secure and that teams were developing a strategy for a safe re-entry. Their subsequent announcement provided a more detailed account of the origins of the issue. B-18 experienced an irregularity during the pressure testing of the gas system, which was carried out in preparation for the comprehensive structural proof examination. They made it clear that no propellant had been put into the vehicle and that the engines were yet to be fitted. This information clarified why there was no combustion and why the damage pattern appeared distinct from usual cryogenic test failures. Since this was not a cryogenic or fuel-oriented assessment, the vehicle had been pressurized with high-pressure gas, presumably nitrogen and oxygen, to evaluate the performance of the recently implemented gas system that accompanied the V3 enhancements. The goal was to maximize the gas system's capacity before proceeding to full structural pressurization, followed by eventual cryogenic assessments. Nonetheless, it became apparent that the gas system failed to endure the required pressures. However, it remains possible that the issue did not solely arise from the gas system itself. Several alternative explanations have been proposed by observers. A significant factor to consider is the COPVs, or Composite Overwrapped Pressure Vessels. These vessels are positioned above the engine compartment, near the chines, close to where the damage was observed. It is conceivable that the internal pressure rise within the system had an effect on the COPVs. Should one of these vessels fail or abruptly release compressed gas, the force might have combined with the high-pressure gas from the system testing, leading to the rupture of the liquid oxygen tank and outer structure, consistent with the aftermath observed. In this context, while COPV may not be the initial failure point, they potentially exacerbated the destruction following the first rupture. There is also conjecture that the primary problem could be located within the gas system line itself. If a pipe in proximity to the COPV was the first to fail, the sudden pressure release could have created shock waves that impacted the nearby components, sparking a chain reaction involving the COPV and ultimately damaging the surrounding structure. Currently, this remains as informed speculation based on SpaceX's sparse initial communications. As the company mentioned, their teams required time to investigate the precise origin of the issue before drawing conclusions. In the meantime, we can only await additional updates. 
Regardless of what the eventual cause may be, the situation is evident. The damage sustained by B-18 is too significant to permit any future tests or missions. The booster will need to be relocated back to Mega Bay or perhaps the Rocket Garden for assessment. Lift support equipment has already been observed arriving at Massey, indicating that the process of transporting B-18 might commence shortly. However, given the extent of the damage, the internal changes, and the status of the tanks, it is improbable that this booster can be completely fixed. Replacing such a significant structural component or an entire stack of tanks would pose considerable challenges. Following the investigation, it is expected that the booster will be decommissioned and dismantled. This situation understandably brings disappointment to numerous observers of the V3 development. SpaceX took a notably lengthy period to assemble B-18. From May until early November, almost six months were allocated to the vehicle stacking. With already high hopes for the V3 enhancements, this occurrence has raised worries among several watchers. The fact that the very first prototype of the new version encountered failure at such an early stage has intensified fears of a fundamental design issue. Nevertheless, this perspective is rather defeatist. Numerous development initiatives undergo early setbacks that do not imply lasting problems. In my opinion, this seems to be an isolated incident rather than an indication of a larger structural issue. Still, the immediate repercussions will be substantial. SpaceX has not yet stacked the subsequent V3 booster, B-19. This indicates that there is no ready replacement to carry on preparations for Flight 12. The stacking of B-18 took six months, and even if the teams accelerate the process due to their experience, realistically, a new booster cannot be finished before the conclusion of the year. The company must also complete its investigation into the cause before they can safely move forward with B-19. After B-19 is stacked, it will still require an extensive testing campaign, which might extend over several weeks or longer. For these reasons, the likelihood of witnessing Flight 12, the inaugural V3 flight scheduled for January, now appears very slim. This postponement will influence not only this particular mission, but also the timeline for subsequent flights, many of which have significant objectives. In the larger context, this setback also has ramifications for SpaceX's competitive stance regarding Artemis 3. The development timeline for Starship and HLS has already been slower than many anticipated, and now SpaceX must also face Blue Origin, which is progressing with its Lunar Lander initiative at an unexpectedly rapid pace. Nonetheless, experiences like this are part of the lengthy and unpredictable path of rocket development. SpaceX has encountered numerous obstacles since its inception. Even this year, the S-36 incident was arguably more severe than the B-18 issue. Yet through clever engineering and swift adjustments, the company rebounded quicker than anticipated and kept moving forward. In many respects, it is fortunate that B-18 failed during a pressure test instead of during a full cryogenic test, a static fire, or even worse, during an actual launch attempt. Therefore, during moments like these, maintaining perspective is crucial. Advancement is never straightforward, and every significant space initiative endures tough phases. If you'd like to support the team driving Starship development, simply comment Don't Give Up SpaceX below. That's it for today's episode. See you in the next time.